What a lovely day and you are good to be back. And here is Azinis for today. Search and rescue team joins operation at sea to search for missing submarine. The Indonesian military deployed a warship Thursday in the hunt for a Navy submarine that went missing with 53 crew aboard off the coast of Bali as other nations sent vessels to help with the search. A Navy spokesman says the 44-year-old submarine KRI Nangala 402 conducts a torpedo drill in waters north of the island of Bali but failed to relay the results as expected. In addition, the Defense Ministry says an aerial search find an oil spill near the submarine's dive location and two Navy vessels with sonar capability have been deployed to assist in the search. Furthermore, the Navy says the oil spin found on the surface could mean there was damage on its fuel tank or could also be a signal from the crew. The Navy adds in a statement that the ship could fall to a depth of 600 to 700 meters in a static diving due to blackout. The submarine was built to sustain pressure at a maximum depth of around 250 meters. Malaysia and Singapore deploy a team to assist search for the missing Indonesian submarine. Malaysia and Singapore deploys vessels and crews to aid the search for a missing Indonesian submarine with 53 crew on board. Video released by Malaysia's Navy shows soldiers preparing a rescue ship Megabakti leaving port. The city-state's defense minister says in a post on social media, Singapore also deploys a submarine rescue vessel to help with search operations. Meanwhile, Eng Eng Han says the submarine rescue vessels in dispatch. In addition, an Indonesian Navy spokesman says no signs of the submarine had been detected after rescuers found an oil slick a day earlier. The 44-year-old submarine KRI Nangala 402 was conducting a torpedo drill north of the island of Bali but failed to relay the results as expected. Thailand bars and restaurants are closed due to the increase in cases of the coronavirus in the country. Thailand's bars and restaurants close ahead of restrictions imposed to curb with the surge in COVID-19 cases. Bars, restaurants and convenience stores are closed after the government announced two weeks of restrictions on restaurants to ban alcohol and to close daily by convenience in red zones in Bangkok and other 18 provinces. At the same time, 59 provinces are classified as orange. Jindo Sanaraj, a tuk-tuk driver, says the action makes us feel like it will be hard to survive this time. The last major lockdown was almost a year ago, before months of relatively relaxed carbs, as cases were mainly contained. But now, amid the third wave of infections, the Southeast Asian country reported 1,767 new coronavirus cases, bringing the total number to 42,352 with 101 fatalities. Thousands of people flock to Vietnam to celebrate the festival amidst the coronavirus pandemic. Tens of thousands of visitors gathered at the temple in Vietnam's North Puto province to mark a religious festival. An event taking place in stark contrast to neighboring countries such as Thailand and Cambodia that are currently battling new spikes in virus infections. <laughs> Provincial authority says as many as 30,000 people are expected to visit the Hung King's temple on each of the three days of festival. The event commemorates the anniversary of the death of the first king who founded Vietnam some 4,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. 
the main day of the festival and a public holiday in Vietnam. The festival was recognized by UNESCO as an intangible cultural heritage of humanity in 2012. At the temple site, there are preventive measures in place, including hand sanitizers at entrances and police ensuring people keep wearing face masks. Vietnam has kept its total tally of coronavirus cases to around more than 2,000 and has reported more than 30 deaths since the pandemic began. Japanese Prime Ministers cancel trips to India and Philippines due to the coronavirus pandemic. Senior government spokesman confirms Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga cancelled plans to visit India and the Philippines during his country's extended holiday starting this week amid a sharp rise in COVID-19 cases. Chief Cabinet Secretary Katsunu Bokato says that Suga cancelled his trip to two countries in order to take all possible countermeasures because of the coronavirus. The trip had not been officially announced but was widely reported in local media. Japan's government is considering a state of emergency for Tokyo and several other prefectures, while Indian data show there had been 295,041 new infections nationwide overnight and 2,023 deaths, India's highest in the pandemic. Japan and India are members of a group known as a Quad, which also includes the United States and Australia. Students of South Korea shave heads to protest Japan's Fukushima nuclear plans to release water into sea. More than 30 South Korean college students shaved their heads to protest Japan's decision to release water from its crippled Fukushima nuclear plant into the sea. The protesters chant and held placards in front of Tokyo's embassy in Seoul with a local ban on gatherings larger than 10 people. Police periodically dispersed crowds but did not stop the event from taking place. Japan's government says it will release more than 1 million tons of treated water from the Fukushima site in stages starting in about two years. Seoul has strongly rebuked the decision, with the foreign ministry summoning the Japanese ambassador and President Moon Jae-in ordering officials to explore petitioning an international court. U.S. climate envoy John Kerry says he believes Japan made the decision in a transparent manner and will continue to follow due procedures. Lawyers, members of parliament and activists made criticized proposed revisions to Japan's immigration law. Lawyers, lawmakers and human rights groups meet in Tokyo to criticize a proposed revision to Japan's immigration law saying that the changes run counter to international norms on human rights. Japan is known to be immigration shy even as its population ages and the workforce shrinks. In 2019, 0.4 refugee applications were accepted in Japan, opposed to 25.9% in Germany and 29.6% in the United States. Under the current law, deportation orders are suspended when an asylum seeker reapplies for refugee status or appeals a decision meaning asylum seekers could be held in government detention centers for long periods of time, sometimes for years. However, under the revised law, asylum seeker could receive a deportation order if their third application for refugee status is rejected, and those who refuse deportation orders will be penalized. The Justice Ministry says the revisions are made to stop the abuse of application system and prevent long-term detentions, but critics say the bill misses the mark and ignores the human rights of asylum seekers in some cases, even endangering their lives. China urges Japan to be more transparent on the problem of nuclear contaminated water. Foreign Ministry spokesman Wang Wenbin at a regular press briefing in Beijing says China urges Japan to be more open and transparent and have the international community, especially its neighboring countries, fully involved in the nuclear contaminated water issue. 
Meanwhile, Wang in a statement in response to a report that the International Atomic Energy Agency is planning to send a technical mission to Japan and the remarks of the agency's director general, Rafael Mariano Grossi, that South Korean experts need to join the international team to monitor the process of Fukushima water release. Wang adds, Japan's close neighbor and stakeholder China is concerned about relevant reports. The disposal of the contaminated water from the Fukushima nuclear accident bears on the global ecological and environmental safety and the health of the people in all countries. China affirms today is Earth Day. There is only one Earth that mankind calls home and every country has a responsibility to protect it and continues urges the Japanese side to assume it's due to international obligation work with the rest of the international community to protect environment and treasure Earth with concrete actions and stop dangerous moves that will harm global marine environment and international public health. The National Unity Government of Myanmar urges the ASEAN leaders to acknowledge its legality in the meeting to discuss the situation in the country. Myanmar's newly formed unity government are just Southeast Asian nations to recognize its legitimacy ahead of a meeting between the bloc leaders to discuss the escalating crisis in the country. Please recognize and hear. According to diplomats and officials in Jakarta, that seven Southeast Asian nation leaders are expected to attend the meeting summit with the head of Myanmar's junta to discuss the crisis caused by the military coup. The sources say Senior General Ming Oholeng, who led the coup that deposed Myanmar's democratically elected government in February, is expected to participate in the summit of the 10-member Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Yeah, I think it is really need to... Now Suzanne Halahala Soe, as a minister in the National Unity Government, a coalition formed by a group of pro-democracy politicians, urge ASEAN member states not to recognize the coup during a call with an ASEAN lawmakers group. The National Unity Government was formed and nominally includes the post leader Aung San Suu Kyi, who has been in detention since the coup, as well as leaders of the protest and ethnic minorities. I don't have why. Myanmar's Home Affairs Ministry has declared the National Unity Government unlawful, but the National Unity Government says it is the legitimate authority in Myanmar and has requested international recognition and an invitation to the Jakarta meeting. It has also demanded that ASEAN withdraw the invitation to the junta leader. Good to see you. So do we have to call Xi Jinping joins world leaders at the virtual summit on climate change hosted by Joe Biden. Chinese president says that faced with unprecedented challenges in global environmental governance, the international community needs to come up with unprecedented ambition and action. The head of state notes that people must treat nature as their root, respect it, protect it and follow its laws, and should protect nature and preserve the environment like protect our eyes and endeavor to foster a new relationship where man and nature can both prosper and live in harmony. The Chinese president stresses the importance of upholding multilateralism, unity and cooperation to tackle climate change. She also says welcoming the returning of the United States to the multilateral governance on climate change China looks forward to working with the international community, including the United States, to jointly advance global environmental governance. At the virtual summit, she makes the official announcement that China will strive to peak carbon dioxide emissions before 2030 and achieve carbon neutrality before 2060. Other leaders at the summit say that climate change is a severe challenge faced by the international community and its global joint efforts. Action should be taken quickly to further increase emissions reduction, strengthen technological innovation, vigorously develop clean energy, create more employment opportunities and more room for growth, achieve green and more sustainable development, protect the common planet of mankind, and make men and nature live in harmony for the benefit of future generations. Thank you for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a nice day.